Israel has the right and the obligation to defend itself and, again, to try to make sure that what happened never happens again. No country, not the United States, not anyone else that I can think of, would tolerate uh, the slaughter of its civilians. The fact that it cynically and monstrously, deliberately, has people, uh, men, women, and children, as human shields, we will be talking about concrete steps uh, that can and should be taken to minimize harm to men, women, and children uh, in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, and this is something that the United States is committed to. Israel has the right and the obligation to defend itself and, again, to try to make sure that what happened never happens again. No country, no country, not the United States, not anyone else that I can think of, would tolerate uh, the slaughter of its civilians. So we stand behind that uh, and we stand behind the proposition. But as democracies, uh, the United States, Israel, other democracies have a responsibility to do everything possible to protect civilians who may be caught in, in harm's way. And this, again, is a, is, is a crossfire, quite literally, of Hamas's making. The fact that it cynically and monstrously, deliberately, has people, uh, men, women, and children, as human shields, um, puts, uh, puts its uh, command posts, puts its leadership, puts its fighters, puts its weapons, puts its munitions underneath hospitals or even inside them, schools, mosques, makes this incredibly challenging. But we have to rise to that responsibility. And so we will be talking about concrete steps uh, that can and should be taken to minimize harm to men, women, and children uh, in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, and this is something that the United States is committed to. I'm not going to get into the, the details here but it's very much uh, on the agenda. When I see a Palestinian child, a boy, a girl, pulled from the rubble of a collapsed building, that hits me in the gut as much as seeing a child in Israel or anywhere else. Uh, so this is something that we have an obligation uh, to respond to, and we will. I wonder if you could get your assessment of the, the current risk of the spillover and the conflict. Uh, today, Hezbollah has said they've attacked 19 posts along Israel's border with Lebanon. Uh, the Houthis said the other day they're entering the conflict. Uh, and just secondly, while you're in the region, uh, how do you expect to be able to get other countries in the region involved in uh, sort of the, the day after plan that you're talking about when uh, you know there's rising opposition, rising protests against Israel from we've seen Bahrain and Jordanians pull out their ambassadors? So we are determined to prevent escalation on, on any of these fronts, whether it's um, Lebanon, northern Israel, southern Lebanon, uh, whether it's the West Bank, whether it's anywhere else in the region. And the president's been very clear in, in what he said publicly. We've been very clear in what we've shared privately. We've been very clear in some of the actions we're taking that we are determined to deter uh, any escalation. So uh, with our partners um, as well, we're making sure that that message gets through. It's not in anyone's interest not in anyone's interest for this to escalate. And I think some of the uh, other parties involved actually recognize that. But we're going to work on that every single day. Do you assess that that's, that's happening, though, if these strikes are already, already taking place? Uh, what we've seen so far uh, are yet discrete uh, attacks. We've responded as, uh, as necessary, including on our forces, uh, our forces who are in the region, in Syria and Iraq, uh, to prevent the resurgence of, of ISIL, which also should be in everyone's interest. And you saw the actions that we took in response to that. But as I said, we're determined to uh, prevent escalation, to prevent the spread of this conflict, uh, and we're taking the uh, necessary steps to try to make sure that that happens. With regard to, um, uh, to what comes next, again, I think, understandably, people are very focused on the day of, uh, not just the, uh, the day after. But we do have to have conversations now about how we can best set the conditions for a durable, sustainable peace, durable, sustainable security for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Uh, so I expect that uh, those are conversations that we'll have an opportunity to pursue uh, over the next couple of days. But uh, this is a, a long-term effort, but we have to make sure that we're focused on it now.